What's up you guys, I'm Dan, and this is Max, and today we'll be talking about how I got rid of my Chase Sapphire Reserve card, and a few tips if you're thinking about doing the same thing yourself. So I've been using the Chase Trifecta credit card strategy for quite some time. I really enjoyed the perks of having global entry and priority pass lounge access, and the 50% bonus when your points are redeemed on travel. Check out my Chase Trifecta video for more details. Unfortunately though, now that Chase has increased the annual fee from $450 to $550, that's meant that the effective annual fee has gone from $150, because that's net of a $300 travel credit, to $250. And on top of that, they've gone from giving you $60 in DoorDash credit twice a year to just giving you a $5 a month allowance, and I believe it's use it or lose it. So it's really not as good a value proposition for me anymore. And then as luck would have it, along came the Capital One Venture X. This card has a $395 annual fee, but with the $300 annual travel credit, we're at a net 95, plus a $100 anniversary bonus, it's actually a card that pays you $5 to have it, as long as, of course, you use that travel credit. So it's better than free, and the perks are very similar to those offered with the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Now I'm going to pair this with the Capital One Saver One card. Both cards have no foreign transaction fees and will be great to travel. And the Capital One Saver One gives you 3% back on uh, many categories that I use, such as groceries and uh, dining, um, and then also uh, streaming services as well. Oh, and entertainment. Now, unfortunately, I cannot get the Capital One Venture X card just yet, and here's my first tip for you. I didn't know that this was the case. Capital One has a policy uh, that you can only get one credit card from them every six months. And I picked up the Capital One Saver One card back in November. So when I applied for the, uh, the Venture X card uh, earlier this year, uh, I was denied for the reason that there was a recent application either pending or processed. So I need to wait until May uh, when I can get the Venture X card. Now, once I get that card, my problem would have been then that I had two cards that have a $300 travel credit and a pretty low likelihood that I'm going to go on a big trip this year. Uh, one is because of COVID. I have family in Japan and in Thailand where there are still restrictions. Uh, the other is uh, Max is, you know, off and on giving me some um, not really big health scares, but I am concerned about him and he's getting older. So things are a little bit more up in the air right now. So here's the next tip and one that is, you know, specific to the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Um, I didn't know this until recently, that if you um, get rid of the card, you actually get a prorated refund on your annual fee. So the way that works, the math is pretty simple. Uh, the annual fee was $550. There were eight months remaining until my anniversary date when I would be charged the new annual fee. So 550 divided by 12 times eight means that they would refund me $367 if I got rid of that card. So getting $367 would be a heck of a lot better than potentially, say if I wasn't able to use the $300 travel credit this year, uh, then I would sort of lose out on that $300, plus I would have paid um, this $367 in the annual fee by that time, and so it would have been effectively a total loss of $667 compared to the situation where I'm in now. So that's the second tip in this video. Uh, the third tip is not to close out the account. Now, of course, with some credit cards, you have to close out the account. Like my American Express Platinum, uh, this card does not have a downgrade path to a no annual fee card. However, with Chase, you do have the ability to, um, to do a product change to a no annual fee card, so you can keep the account going, but not incur any annual fee. Why would you want to do that, you ask? Well, a really major uh, factor in your credit score is the average age of your accounts. And so if you're able to keep the account open and have it continue to age over time, then this will, in the long run, help your credit score more than, of course, closing the account. So um, I called Chase and um, I wanted to do a product change to a no annual fee card. Uh, I was going to do the Chase Freedom Flex, but somehow the guy um, talked me into doing a, um, a Chase Sapphire. It's just a regular Sapphire card with no annual fee. Uh, but then I called back a couple of days later because, well, and I'm glad I did because I learned a couple of things. I learned that uh, 
you know, this is a, the next tip in today's video, is you can only have one Sapphire card um, at a time. So you can't have the Sapphire Reserve and the Preferred anymore, or the, the regular Sapphire and the Reserve, or what have you. And so that meant that I definitely wanted to change over to a Chase Freedom Flex. So I've got that coming in the mail at some point. Now, why would I want to not have a Sapphire Reserve card uh, at the moment? Well, the next thing is that with Chase, every 48 months or four years, you are eligible for another sign up bonus. And I've had that Chase Sapphire Reserve now for almost five years, I think. And so I am eligible for another sign up bonus should I choose to get one in the future. And um, since you can't have more than one Sapphire card, then I would need to not have a Sapphire card at that time. And might as well knock that out now by product changing to a Freedom Flex instead of, of the base Sapphire. So why do I want to keep this option open even if I'm going to have the Venture X? If you think about it, let's say that the sign up bonus is $600 or $800. Well, that's easily going to make up for the effective annual fee of $250, plus all of the points that I'm holding on to with Chase will then get a 50% um, redemption bonus for travel. And so that's roughly another $400 of value right now. So I'd get the sign up bonus plus that minus the 250. We're looking at a really good value and hopefully I'll be doing more travel at that time. We shall see. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to, you know, get a new card next year or the year after that. Um, kind of things are up in the air a little bit. But anyway, it's, it's a good option to have, absolutely. Quick side note here, for those of you that are really good with, um, you know, airline partners and transferring those points over, that's of course another option. I could do that right now. Because um, there is, a, you know, there is time value of money. And I have these, you know, I have right now $800 worth of points just kind of sitting there with Chase that I'm not doing anything with. But the problem is I don't know exactly when um, I'm going to use them and getting a 50% return on the redemption bonus is probably bigger than whatever return I can get um, by putting those funds to work elsewhere. So I think it, it's going to be fine. But if, um, you know, if I was good, if I wanted to do the, um, the airline miles and, and do the transfer partners thing, then of course there are possibilities to get really good value for that. And uh, you can check out other channels if you want to learn more about that. That's not my thing. So um, that's what I've done for now. I have now uh, no annual fees from Chase. I still have those points there. <laughs> I still have those points there ready to be redeemed with a 50% bonus in the future and eligibility to get a sign up bonus once again for the Chase Sapphire Reserve. Um, and then I'm really looking forward to uh, adopting this new strategy using the Capital One Venture X and the Capital One Saver One card, hopefully in May. Stay tuned for more details on that. But I hope you found the tips in today's video helpful. If you did, please uh, hit the like button and consider subscribing. If you have any more tips that you'd like to share with people that I didn't cover, please do so in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.